doing it even for us in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen? Amen. I want us to read God's word uh, from 2 Corinthians chapter 8. And as we do that, there, is, uh, there are some two individuals that we've been mentioning who are planning to get married this coming Saturday. I don't know whether they are here. Lo Karingithi and Winnie Warugoro, are you here for this service? If you are, please come right to the front. We'd love to pray for you even as we finish up in reading God's word. This, these two are getting married um, this Saturday. Indi mara fast eh kujeni msibame tu hapa nitaombea after we do the scripture reading awesome wapigeni tu makofi kama unaweza I was in the PMCC class and I'm realizing that it takes a lot of confidence for you to convince someone to live with you for the rest of their lives eh alafu kupanga kufanya hivyo publicly so we congratulate you guys okay second corinthians chapter 8 from verse 1 to verse 15 And now, brothers and sisters, we want you to know about the grace that God has given the Macedonian churches. In the midst of a very severe trial, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. For I testify that they gave as much as they were able and even beyond their ability. Entirely on their own, they urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in this service to the Lord's people. And they exceeded our expectations. They gave themselves first of all to the Lord, and then by the will of God also to us. So we urged Titus, just as he had earlier made a beginning, to bring also to completion this act of grace on your part. But since you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in complete earnestness, and in the love we have kindled in you, see that you also excel in this grace of giving. I am not commanding you, but I want you to test the sincerity of your love by comparing it with the earnestness of others. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you through his poverty might become rich. And here is my judgment about what is best for you in this matter. Last year, look at your neighbor and tell them, last year. Last year. See, <laughs> Last year, you are the first not only to give, but also to have the desire to do so. Now, finish the work so that your eager willingness to do it may be matched by your completion of it according to your means. For if the willingness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. Our desire is not that others might be relieved while you had pressed, but that they, there might be equality. At the present time, your plenty will supply what they need, so that in turn, their plenty will supply what you need. The goal is equality, as it is written, the one who gathered much did not have too much, and the one who gathered little did not have too little. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for your word and we want to ask that, Lord God, as we hear it and as we learn from it, that you would speak to us that our lives are going to be changed, that we are going to be different because we are going to obey your word even as we receive it. I also ask for myself that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart will be pleasing and acceptable to you even this morning. We want to thank you for law and we want to thank you for Winnie want to thank you for the journey they have walked up to this moment and the desire they have to hold their wedding this coming week and also to live together in marriage. We want to speak the blessing of God upon them as a community of faith and we want to ask that, Lord God, you would bless them, that you would guide them, that you would lead them, that they will know God's presence even as they walk in their life, that they will for sure know that God is with them to guide them in every way so that they will be able to succeed even in the name of Jesus. We also want to pray for their event this coming Saturday, that Lord God, as they are joined in covenant and in holy matrimony, that Lord God, you'll be with them and that the things that they are working towards will work out even for their success and for their good. And so we bless them as this congregation. In Jesus' name, do we pray and believe. And everyone says, Amen. you may have your seats in the presence of the Lord. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much. By the way, uh, I mentioned, I actually appreciated whoever came up with the idea that, you know, when a wedding happens, that when you're cutting cake, that one of those cakes can be given to the pastor. God bless you. 
Mungu awabariki. Ni pressure na wapea just in case you hadn't planned to give me a kick. Okay, sawa. Also want to appreciate we are, we are talking about generosity and it's it's important for us to appreciate the fact that as a church we have not sat on what it is that we are doing we've actually acted on it i was confessing to a few people that we were talking with including our advisory team that the 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 conversation or the the series that we've been learning on generosity is not bathed by the fact that we are broke as a church no, it's good to say that ni vizuri eh you people are generous and you are givers and we are thankful to god for that jipigia makofi pale huko eh i think it's important i think it's very important to say that and also to appreciate you for the journey that you've walked to even build classes for our quests yeah eh Kwanza, Kwanza parents who would stop me outside and tell me because I don't I don't know for some reason the weather is refusing to change. Yeah, July has not left us. Yeah, so the and just knowing that our kids are in a warmer warmer environment well arranged I I I know there is quite some work that we'll need to do to finish that up but knowing that they're in that environment really really appreciate you. I did say that when we were setting up the teens classes that that was not going to be the stop it was just going to be one of the steps not a stop but a st- mm. did i just yeah just yeah not a stop but a step so immediately we started the teens came over and they asked nasisi and they are ours hey they are ours. let me tell you i have been part of church for quite a while and i have been in places where we have proclaimed how we are youth oriented as a church and done nothing about it how we are young people oriented and by the way did you know that the average age of a kenyan is 18.9 years in other words <laughs> we used to sing a song that used to ask kanisa litajengwa na kina nani let me tell you the yo 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 ni nyinyi but let me tell you kanisa litajengewa akina nani it's this younger generation by the way funny bit 70% of kenya is under the age of 35 70% kenya is under the age of 35 nataka nataka uone pale ministry ko suppose kwenda are we together so the teens came to us and they told us nasisi and i have been there so i i i think i've de- uh, demonstrated this to you guys again and again sometimes when your frustration is not enough go to these places and get frustrated so that you know how to pray and how to plan and i've been at their at their tent first of all it doesn't look good aikai poa aikai representative ya ikanisa tukubaliane tu and so we committed the same team that has been helping us do the work on the ground and they have gone they have surveyed they have figured out what they need to do we are setting up a, a hall right now our teens on a regular sunday when they have closed school we have about 120 of them uh, meeting on a sunday which is a good number but when i went there they told me the reason we are looking for a hall that can sit 300 is that we intend to grow man so you come and scabble and say because me i feel as changing even the context of where we are living and so we have gone we have researched we have come back we need to raise 2 million shillings only to build a hall for our teens and that money is with me say that money is with me akisema na confidence nikai ko na wewe that money is with me and so on sunday ikona mimi to men in the mimi for sure <laughs> so next sunday we are going to be taking pledges in regards to that i want you to prepare last time i had asked when we were uh, doing the work that we were doing for the teens that we had only 300 people who said i was going to give 10000 um 
and then would have had the money covered. This one I'm looking for 200 people. And maybe you missed out on the 300 easy ways you miss. And even beyond that, you might say, you know, I have my 5,000, I have my 2,000, I have my 1,000. I want us to pledge and I want us by the end of October to have finished building that hall for them. Amen. 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 Good. <clears throat> let's jump into the sermon. Let's, let's, let's finish this series that you're talking about here. I, I, I love the Amen. And may God hear it and complete it. We said, or we've been saying that God is calling us to generosity. And generosity is demonstrated by outstretched hands. Not by folded hands, but by outstretched hands. Out, outstretched hands talk about abundance, not about scarcity. Not about scarcity, not about limitation, not about... Um, uh, survival but about sufficiency and our prayer is that God will help us to live lives of fullness of abundance even as we trust in him and even as we believe in him we said last Sunday that the posture of generosity starts from the heart how are you set before you even act on generosity how are you set as an individual to actually act out what God is putting in your heart. We learned about the principle of sowing. Uh, borrowing from Galatians. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, so do they reap. The principle of sowing, the God who supplies what it is that we are sowing, and the grace of service. Okay? The principle of sowing and the joy of distributing seed everywhere, even as God allows us. And the God who supplies, and then the grace of service. So that we do not slow down in the grace that God has given us so that we are able to serve. Okay? We talked about us being conduits. Okay? Conduits always have continuity. And I'm, I'm, I'm dropping stuff. Okay? <laughs> conduits always have continuity. You... You receive from God who supplies. You serve others. The praise goes back to God who supplies even more. And you serve others. You are a conduit, not a stopper, not a container. And we say the same God, the Bible says, he who supplies seed to the sower also takes care of bread for you. So God is also concerned about your need and about your concerns as much as he's concerned about you being a vessel that actually ends up serving others. Serving others. 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and chapter 9, when he talks about the grace for service, the, the, the word grace in these two chapters is used 10 times. I think Paul was trying to say, if you are going to give, then you're going to need grace. And I, I, I want to close what I've been teaching by just maybe making a simple sentence. Generosity is grace. Grace received, and then grace in giving. Freely have you received, freely give. You become a conduit. You become a conduit. Uh, today I have two points only, believe it or not. Two, just two points. Um, there is somebody who was asking me, is, is, there, is, there, um, is there something, like you, do you people go and learn how to do three points? Do you go and learn how to do four points? Like, like what is it that you... That you do. Is that why you keep us for long in church? Um, because you must finish your four points. So for those of you who want a shorter sermon, here it is. Two points only. Number one is about the picture of grace. The picture of grace. Paul tells the church in Corinth, and now brothers and sisters, we want you to know about the grace that God has given the Macedonian churches. Now, the Macedonian churches here are represented by the church in Philippi, the church in Berea, and the church in Thessalonica at that particular time. Okay? 
Uh, of course, we know the church of Philippi because of the book of Philippians. We know the church in Thessalonica because of the two letters that were written to them uh, in Thessalonians. We know about the church in Berea because they are called the people who are diligent, who do not just hear the word, but they went searching scriptures to confirm that which it is that they had been taught. And the Bible paints out how these guys were a picture of grace. It says, A, because of severe trial, a very severe trial, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. Okay? So the painter is painting this picture and starts by painting of how these guys look like. Okay? Now, there are two things that seem to go together. Severe trial and extreme poverty. They seem, they seem to go together. Okay? Overflowing joy and rich generosity also seem to go together. Where there is a problem is when you combine these four. It doesn't seem to work. Okay? People who are undergoing a severe trial and extreme poverty do not seem to have joy. Leave alone overflowing joy. They set themselves as receivers, not as generous, leave alone rich generosity. And I want you to see that Paul is so superfluous. Write that one. <laughs> he actually chooses to use four superlatives when he's expressing how these guys were. He talks about a very severe trial. He talks about extreme poverty. He talks about overflowing joy. He talks about rich generosity. They don't seem to match. They don't seem to go together unless there is grace. Because it's only grace that can enable somebody who's go undergoing such a trial and who's under such intense economic conditions to actually turn themselves and say, you know what? I have overflowing joy. I got joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart. Down in my heart. And then I am rich in generosity. It's only grace. It says, B, they give what they were able to. In verse 3, that they gave as much as they were able to. So they went, they looked around, what do I have? They gave that. But here is where grace comes in. The Bible says, they even gave beyond their ability. I mean, together. Remember, they are severe trial, extreme poverty. Instead of singing Sinado, Sinandai, Sina Chorus, <laughs> they actually went and gave as they were able to. And the Bible says, they even gave beyond their ability. Their substance, their time, their labor, their strength. I, I, I tend to think that you're not being generous if you're still comfortable in your giving. In, in Luke 21, Jesus was seated in the temple with his disciples watching people give. The same way I sit over here and watch people. Jesus was seated you know, in the temple watching people give. And, and it is said that uh, the collection boxes were made of brass and if you those guys did not have notes as much if you are a rich person and you wanted to show people that you are giving and you come with your bags of money you want to throw them in that brass container in a way that it is echoed in the temple that you are giving so you can imagine this woman who comes with two mites what is even a mite right do you remember those coins uh, that we used to see Kitambo 
that had a hole. I can't imagine that is what she was bringing. Right? And she brings them and puts them in. And Jesus recognizes this woman has not only given what she's able to, she's given the rest of her life. Because she doesn't know where she's going to go. She doesn't know where she's going to go. These guys have given and their guards are waiting for them and their vehicles are waiting for them. They're just going to walk back to them and continue and go give somewhere else. Grace. It says, in verse, <laughs> second part of verse three, they, as they were able and even beyond their ability, entirely on their own, they urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in this service to the Lord's people. So here you see, when you're painting this picture, they pleaded to be included. We also want to be part of this giving. Extreme poverty, okay? Severe trial. Maybe even Paul is looking at them and thinking, let us not ask those ones. Let us make them ushers. Because <laughs> So sometimes you go into a situation and you can look and you can say, these ones look like they can give. Those ones, why don't you guide the vehicles as they enter? The guy said, no, 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 no. We are pleading for the opportunity to give. And here's another superlative. They urgently pleaded. They came and told Paul, Masa ni machache. <laughs> you cannot not include us. We must be part of this. They were not asked. They were the ones who were asking. <laughs> I was trying to think about this passage in Exodus 36 when, when God instructed Moses, tell people to give towards the building of the tabernacle. And people made stuff and people, you know, brought their gifts and some of them took off their earrings. By the way, in between, people still had earrings to give to Aaron to make the golden calf and all this kind of stuff. And people brought, brought their things until the people who were working. This is my prayer, Njao, while we are working on this compound. The Bible says in Exodus 36, it is the people who are on the compound, who are working, who went to tell Moses to tell people to stop bringing things. Because what they had was too much. Tell them to stop giving. Can you imagine that? Me standing here one Sunday and saying, I, am, I, I forbid you. May God give me one of those days. But, but here's another prayer that I was praying. One of these Sundays, that people just go like, I am tired. I can't wait for the time for giving. Hello? Because there are some of us who remember that it is time for giving when it is said that it is time for that I'm so prepared that I could not wait. Actually, Mike, since you had our finance whatever, from this Sunday moving forward, so that if somebody is urgently feeling, I cannot lift my hands to worship until I worship through giving. They come, they do that. I pray that becomes our attitude. Amen. That it's not asked of, it's not pleaded for, it's one of those things that, where can I get an opportunity? I am asking you, I am pleading with you to be urgently included in giving. What grace. It says, in verse 5, they even exceeded our expectations because they first gave themselves to the Lord. These are people who understand what they have received. And they realize who it is they have received it from. And that is who they surrender to. You see, a lot of arguments about generosity and about giving are in regards to people and institutions. Me, I cannot give in church. Hey. Right? Or I cannot give to that pastor. Hey. The pastors are squeezy. Right? Or churches are squeezy. 
But people who are surrendered to the Lord, people who are given to that fast, to God fast, actually the rest does not become a struggle. So here's a question. A question that I think I've posed three or four times this year. So I'm posing it again. When we sing, I surrender. Right? I would love for our worship team not to ask us to sing along with them, I surrender all. I'd love for you to feel which percentage you have surrendered yourself. Because the Bible says they gave themselves first to the Lord. And in giving themselves first to the Lord, then there was no issue even in their substance. For the Bible says, where your treasure is, there your heart is also. So if your heart is in the Lord, guess where your treasure is? It is in the Lord. And D, okay, D, they gave themselves to the Lord first. And E, they then gave themselves to us. It's a picture of grace. They then gave themselves to us. No, 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 saying, Paul, wherever you go, we will follow after you. We will do everything that, you know, we, we, we are no longer here. We are going everywhere it is that you're going. That's not necessarily what they were doing. They're saying, you know, we are giving ourselves even to the work of ministry as you have instructed us. We will not sit back. Giving ourselves and our substance to the Lord is not enough. We are actually going to give ourselves to the work of ministry and to do it. To the calling that God has given us. That's a picture of grace. Severe trial and extreme poverty added with overflowing joy and rich generosity. They gave what they were able to, but also beyond their ability. They pleaded, not grudgingly, but urgently to be included. They gave themselves to the Lord first. Then they gave themselves to us. Point number two. The exercise of grace. The exercise of grace. A. So that you don't hear the points. It says, as you excel in everything, excel in giving. It says in verse 7. But since you excel in everything, and these are guys who are praising themselves, okay? This is the Corinthian church, we are good in this, we are good in business, we are good in hosting, we are good in raving, because it was one of those places where people, when they wanted to hold sherehe, they held proper sherehe. They even held sherehe in the temple. Like crazy. Tells them, as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in complete earnestness and in the love that we have kindled in you, guess what? You should also excel in the grace of giving. Don't just be known for... I was watching a song that was talking about... Uh, a meme that was talking about Nikiendesha Gari Bill Alone. Right? And this guy is singing uh, a song and saying... You know, all the time. You know, as you excel in posting such meme lords. As you excel in speech, in udaku. As you excel in knowledge. As you excel in business. As you excel in your workplace. The outflow of that should be that I'm also excelling in giving. And this is a very specific prayer that I want to pray for us in TCR. That we'll never come back because of a concern and say we don't know what to do. But that we can boldly stand and boldly proclaim, but also boldly live out the grace of generosity. As we have received, we are also overflowing in it. In Jesus' name. <laughs> As you excel, so exercise it. B, Paul tells them, 
complete the work that you started. And he becomes a bit specific about this. In, in verse 6 he says, we add Titus and later on when you read chapter 8, he will talk about the plans that they have made to make sure that the collection that was promised is being done. In verse 6 he says, so we add Titus just as he had earlier made a beginning to bring also to completion this act of grace on your behalf. You promised so complete it. And some of us maybe have been in the exercise of we are collecting pledges, let me pledge. And then other things come around. And they are things of life. And by the way, they are real things of life. They're not unreal. Okay? And it becomes difficult sometimes for us to actually complete what it is that we are supposed to do. I, I was reading a leadership blog and it was saying that 90% of projects that take off and leaders that take off with a vision, 90% of them will have a start that is so loud and with a bang and with a very clear intention. Most of the time, it's 10 to 12% of them that finish. Paul calls back to them and tells them, finish what it is that you began. Paul had been collecting this fund because of a famine that was in Jerusalem. This famine had been prophesied in Acts chapter 11 uh, by Agabus the prophet and he had said there is a strong famine that is coming and it's coming to the area of Jerusalem. Now, you can imagine that in Jerusalem, the Jews were still discussing, the, the church in Jerusalem was still discussing whether the Gentiles could get saved. Okay? And later on in chapter 15 of, uh, of Acts, they will sit down and have a council to discuss how do the Gentiles get included in the family of God. Okay? They are starting to give to a church that is not interested in them being a part of the church. What grace? Are we together? Unajaribu kuwa part of the church. Kuna mtu anakukataza. And you're still being a blessing to them. And so he had tried to collect this gift for, for a while. And you see it pointed in a number of books. In the book of Galatians, you'll see him talking about it. You, uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 16 is where he first sent to them. Ilea last year. is where he first sent to them. And they said, this is how we are going to do it. And he calls them and tells them, don't promise what you cannot deliver. I pray that grace will come to you so that you will be able to actually complete that which you promised to do and to give. It says in verse 10, And here is my judgment about what is best for you in this, master, in this matter. Last year you were the first not only to give but also to have the desire to do so. Now finish the work so that your eager willingness, again he draws superlatives here, your eager willingness, right? Right? To do it may be matched by your completion of it according to your means. For if the willingness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what, what one does not have. Okay? Young men who are here, Paul is speaking to you. When you are promising the world to somebody, not to <laughs> Promise your manageable world. So that your eager willingness to give the world is matched by your completion of what you promised. Are we together? To Kopamoja? Yeah, so that we are able to do what it is that we are supposed to do. As you excel in everything, completing what it is that you are supposed to do. But number three, means and equality. Means and equality. Paul says that our desire is not for some, in verse 13, our desire is not that others might be relieved while you are hard pressed, but that there might be equality. And, and this is a difficult question. And I, I'm praying that the Lord continues giving me understanding on this one. It's a difficult question. How, how do you ask for equality? How, how, how do you ask for, for equality so that some people are not hard pressed while others are breezing um, uh, through whatever it is that is being that is being asked you, you remember being in school and having some geniuses how I saw me like in one Peter 
you're wondering, how are you able to, to do that? Right? What, 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 what is your problem? Right? We were driving with Pastor Francis. He leads our church in Moranga. And he was telling me of one of the candidates in their area who had not put up a single poster and who had not campaigned during the campaign season. And the last week of the campaign season, he showed up in the community and told them, you have seen what I have done. So choose who it is that you want to vote for. And the guy, the opinion, Paul at that time, he was at 76%. Sasa wewe uko hapo uko 2%. Uko hard pressed. And the other one, and you're feeling like, ah, pakuna ikuwa? Equality. How do you do this? Okay. The, there is a principle that they say about uh, as, as, as when we are giving, we are giving with the different amounts, but the same level of sacrifice. Okay? Now, it can work both ways. It can work both ways. We can figure out how is it that we give so that we are a blessing to the household of God. And you and your commitment to God, you know that God have not only done what I am able to, I have gone beyond my ability. On one end, there are people that God blesses. And as God blesses them, they start taking for granted the very grace of where they began. Are we together? As God continues raising you, let's say you're a student, you finish school, you're writing online and you're doing other selling things, you're selling shoes, you're selling saucers and, you know, cutlery and all this kind of stuff online and you're, you're making a bit of money here and there. Let's say you're earning 15000 and you're faithful. You're, you're giving your tithe and all this kind of stuff. And then God raises you, you get a better job. It's paying you 50000 but you still have your thing here on the side. So you now have 60000 and you, you're starting to think, should I really... Because sometimes as we give and as we raise our level of living, we also start questioning whether we should actually really give. And then God raises you and gets you to 100,000. And you start wondering, Iyo kanisa, 10,000. Nipatiane kwa iyo kanisa, 10, mimi, 10,000. Do they even know how to manage money? Right? And God raises you and now you are at 250,000 and you don't know what to do. Right? And the needs around you become many. And yet God is calling you to the original grace. One of our pastors used to say that if you present that, one of the best things to do that, and you want to walk in faithfulness in giving to God, uh, go and ask God, God, when I did not have as much, I was faithful. Now that I have much, teach me how to be faithful. And God is faithful. He may just return you. You know, funny story, we don't want to go back there. We don't want to go back there. We want to stay here in earnings, but God, what about giving? What do I do? Right? And worse still, if you're giving a, if you're giving a big offering and nobody is noticing. I remember talking with a brother one time, very wonderful brother. He actually mobilized, the first time we started as a church, he mobilized a few friends that we had been talking with and bought us our first two speakers as a church. I remember talking with him. It was during the, the uh, March 2013 election, and we were standing in line together to, going to vote. And he told me, you're the guy, I did not know him very well at that point. He told me, you're the guy going to start the church in Rwanda. And I told him, yes. And he told me, oh, we've been wondering with my wife, how it is that we can become a blessing to you. And I told him, we don't have sound. You can help us buy sound. He told us, that is interesting. We'll go and think about it. So they went, they mobilized a few friends. They came, they bought us uh, a mixer and two speakers and they brought them to us. And when I went to thank them, he told me that he's surprised that I'm coming to say thank you. And I, I told him, why would you be surprised by that? And he told me, because where I used to go to church, 
you particularly gave in an envelope and wrote your name and indicated what amount it was. And the higher the amount, the more access you had to the pastor. I told him, really? He told me, yes. So he told me, this season, we are undergoing severe trial and extreme poverty. And uh, they decided to sell a few of their properties so that they could be able to expand their business. And while they were doing that, they were asked that God is demanding that you give some of what you have sold. And they said, no, it was targeted towards this. And so he was asked to not only step down from leadership, but also step down from sitting at the front, you know, and all this kind of stuff. And he was so, so discouraged. And he said, you know, one time I landed in church and we decided to give an offering. And we gave an offering. And he mentioned the number of what it is that they gave. He said, we just felt God leading us that you guys have not been faithful in your tithing and in your giving. And so they wrote a check, brought it to the church. They waited the first week, the second week, the third week. They're now telling us, it's now four months and nobody has recognized us. And we are okay. <laughs> May God give you grace to receive so much that you are such a conduit for blessing, you don't need recognition. You just need to accept that I've received grace and I am giving grace. Amen. May God not raise you, then you have a problem where you start putting stoppers in the journey of you being a conduit of generosity. Generosity. You see, when the Bible talks about means and equality, you, you have to... One of the principles that I try to work with is the principle of the tithe. Now, the, the, the idea of the tithe is carried in the New Testament, but not uh, emphasized in the New Testament. In fact, if Paul wanted to talk about tithing in a heavy way, I think these two chapters is where he should have talked about it. I, I honestly think this is, he had a good opportunity to get to tell people, by the way, don't step into church without tithing. That, that was a very good, he, he had very good grounds and my Bible has space. There was space for him to write. <laughs> Here is my problem with the New Testament. The New Testament does not extol the place of tithing. It shows you that God is the owner of everything. So give everything. Now, let me ask you. If you're struggling with tithing, how are you going to give? Let's get you everything. Sipati <laughs> Jibu. I'm not getting enthusiasm. You know, like there is Atike. What? This adulting. Church adulting. So here is what, where I want to encourage you. If you're struggling in giving, if you're struggling in being generous, Start with tithing. Start with tithing. Tithing is a tenth of that which comes to you. It's a recognition that God has blessed me. I, I was told by my mentor that tithing is saying that God is able to make me live on 90% much better than living on 100%. Dangerous. Dangerous. Mm -hmm. It starts there. So that now, when you're talking about equality, if you're at 200,000 and I'm at 15,000, then we are equal. Are, are we together? Do you understand where I'm going with that? Yet, the Bible doesn't just talk about that equality so that we are settling there. It's talking about us going even beyond our ability. But you start somewhere. Do you know it's very interesting that the, the, the smaller a church is, the higher the percentage of giving and the higher the percentage of givers. The more a church grows, like you all are here at TCR, the lower the percentage of giving. And sometimes it's the reasoning of men rather than reasoning from the grace that you have received from God. I believe you know, two million for a nini, me I can see people who can give me. I, I, I don't think I'm included. Right? They did a survey. Uh, this is an American survey. They did a survey and they, they showed that 
uh, that between 18 and 22 percent of people who have stayed in a church more than 10 years, okay, a church that has been more than 10 years old, the giving is between 18 to 22 percent of the people in a congregation. Think about it. Then they came to the conclusion that most of the people between the 18 and the 22 percent that were giving were giving between 3.7 percent and 5.4 percent, not even 10 percent of their giving. So, kichukua wala na 10 percent. Now, wala who are just giving off their, shooting off their hip, it averages to that. And yet, we want God's blessings. And yet we want God to trust us. Remember last week what we talked about? Yet we want God to trust us with his supply so that we can be able to supply others. And God is saying, Muneka block. You're blocking your very blessing. Let, let, let me jump to a passage that you suspected that I was going to jump to. Malachi. <laughs> but, but you already suspected. Sindio. So let's go there. Malachi chapter 3. I'm going to make an attempt to close with this one. Keyword, attempt. Verse 6. Malachi 3 verse 6. I the Lord do not change, so you the descendants of Jacob are not destroyed. Ever since the time of your ancestors, you have turned away from my decrees and have not kept them. Return to me and I will return to you, says the Lord Almighty. But you ask, how are we to return? Okay? So the Lord is telling them, come back to me. They ask, how are we to return? And maybe at this point, the guys are thinking, God must be wanting to suggest other things of us coming back to him. God tells them, will a mere mortal rob God? Yet you rob me. Hey. Apa ndio mungu anzanga kuita watu robbers. God. And when God calls you a robber, it is confirmed. It's like that when Jesus says yes. <laughs> Nobody can say no. But, but you ask, how are we robbing you? In tithes and offerings. You are under a curse. Your whole nation. Because you are robbing me. Verse 10. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse not calculated, not rounded off. Bwana sifiwe. I wanted to bring the tithe, but the tithe included the fuel to bring there. The whole, the whole tithe into my storehouse, that there may be food in my house, Test me in this, the only place that the Lord asks to be tested. He says, test me in this, and says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will be not enough room to store it. Now, here is my problem. I want the Lord to pour out so much blessing that there is no room to store it in my life. My challenge is bringing the whole tithe to the storehouse of God. But for him to pour out to my storehouse, hapa tuna issue. If you're visiting, and this is your first Sunday here, and you're hearing us go to Malachi, don't leave yet. Next Sunday we are going to be sharing something different. <laughs> In the series, tutunafanya sawa. Man, I jumped from a church that was talking about giving. I landed in another one. They just opened Malachi 3. I knew it. Naskia. <laughs> Sawa. Says, I will prevent pests from devouring your crops, and the vines in your fields will not drop their fruit before it is ripe, says the Lord Almighty. Then all the nations will call you be a delightful land, says the Lord Almighty. I'm about to go deep. The Bible says, bring the whole, store, uh, uh, the whole tithe to the storehouse. And number one thing that God says is that I will pour into you. Remember, 
I will pour. I will throw open. God is becoming rough. He's not asking for a gentle opening of the gates. He's saying, I will throw open the floodgates. See gate here, mutu anatembea, passenger gate. It's, it's the floodgates. It's the one that opens not for the rivers, but for the floods. I'll, I'll, I'll open it. I will pour. Number two, he says, I will prevent. I will prevent. So that whatever it is that you are doing becomes successful. So whatever it is that wants to rise against you, I'm going to put a prevention that it does not happen. And number three, he says, praise will rise up because people will look at you and they will call you a delightful land and a blessed nation. Poor prevents praise. Now, try and imagine with me. So God says, bring the whole tithe to my storehouse. So what happens if I do not bring the whole tithe to God's storehouse? There is no outpouring. There is no prevention. We start on the primary gas in Aisha. <laughs> You know, fuel in Aisha. There, there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a pastor who was telling us one day, you know, well, calculating everything. You know, there's school fees needed, this needed, this needed, this needed. He said, that I'm not going to tithe right now. I will tithe next month and combine the two. He was saying immediately he left that school after paying the school fees. A bus passed with his side mirror. And now he has to go. And he was thinking, now God, what is this? And God told him, I told you, I'll prevent you are not undercover. And by undercover, I mean, you are not under God's protection. And that thing is that people will look at you and instead of praising God, they'll say, Praise turns into surprise. People are shocked at people who proclaim that they serve God. The picture of grace, the exercise of grace. As you excel in everything, excel in this one. By the way, I, I, I know tithing is not just about money, but money is that starting point. And thank God for even the development of technology such that you can say, you know what? I'm not even waiting. My needs are not waiting for Sunday. So my giving is not waiting for Sunday. You're able to figure that out. Carry an envelope. Start withdrawing your tithe and putting it in the envelope so that Sunday you're able to come and say, this is in a Yueka Apple. Excel in that grace. Complete what you started. Because some of us, before we got a job, we wrote, God, and when I get the job, I will be faithful. Complete. As to means and equality, I've given you some direction in regards to that. Generosity is a matter of the posture of the heart. And the worst you can do is to posture yourself to rob God. They will post you and the post will be overtaken by time. Facebook will remind you every year that kuna mutu alikupo, alikupost. But that's okay. Kill insomnia. I said a lot of us, insomnia, see insomnia tukonayo, ni issues tukonazo that are related to finances. The Bible says in verse 12, as we read, for if the willingness is there, if the heart is postured right, if the willingness is there, then the gift is acceptable. How? In accordance to what one has, not what one does not have. God will never demand of you 
what he has not put into you. God will not ask for a grace that he has not overwhelmingly graced you with. Become a conduit, not a container. Willingness, that willingness that you have must then be matched by completion. So I want to pray. Today, today I want to pray for us. I want to pray for us. At the beginning of the year, I, I made a prayer and I want to make it again. I felt a really heavy conviction this week to make that prayer again. And I want to combine two groups of people and I want you to, to ask you to stand. Uh, you know, sit, sit, sit. I'm, I'm going to call on who it is that I'm asking to stand. And, and by the way, if this is not your willingness towards God, don't you stand. I am, I am honestly not impressed by somebody wanting to stand and yet they are not being honest and sincere with God. I'd rather that you say, you know, watch an IV until I sort out my things with God. I want to pray. I want to pray for two categories of people and I want them to stand together. You're here and in this church or maybe you're visiting with us and where you go to church, you are committed to tithing. Don't stand yet. You're committed to tithing. And I want to pray for you that God will continue enabling you to be faithful in your tithing. Number two, I want you to stand together because I'm stuck. You see, Mama, I love what I say. Who you are? Okay. Number two, you're here and your struggle is tithing and you are asking God, God, from this moment, that is the desire I want to put forward for the glory and honor of God's name. Those two categories, please stand up. I want to pray for you. Please stand up. If you're not in that category, please keep sitting. I am not looking at you. The video is just pointing at me. But if you're in one of those two categories, please stand up. I want, I want to pray for you. Heavenly Father, I want to ask for these men and women who are standing in your presence. They do not stand for me. They stand for you. And for the fact that they have given themselves to that place of not only tithing and giving to the house of God, but are asking for that continuous grace to do that. I want to ask that you would fill them again and again with the grace of God. That they'll be able to be obedient continually. That Lord God... They are going to be a picture of God's grace. That whether they are going through tough times or easy times, they are telling God we are going to be faithful in what it is that we are doing. I'm speaking the blessing of God upon them. Your word says that you are not only able to supply seed to the sower, you are also able to supply bread for our food. And I'm asking that Lord God, it's going to be so clear that you are God our supplier and you are God who gives to us even for the glory and honor of your name. I want to pray for some who are standing right now and are committing to start that journey. And I want to pray that, Lord God, that you will pour unto them even as they trust in you. That you will pour out even as you've promised in your word. That you will prevent the devourer and the pests from eating their crop even in the name of Jesus. And that, Lord God, out of their own lives, out of their businesses, out of their work, out of whatever it is that they do, that praise will rise and will go to God because they have chosen to be faithful to God. I speak the blessing of God even upon them. I pray, Lord God, that this church will be known differently because we will never fail in this agenda and it is going to be used for the extension of God's kingdom in the name of Jesus, that more souls are going to know God because we are generous. More lives are going to be transformed because we are generous. More homes are going to be changed because we are generous. People are going to receive food in their homes because we are generous. People are going to be raised from their level of living because we are generous. I pray that this will be a mark of individuals here and a mark of this community because we love God and will bring our promises even to a place of completion. For the rest of us who are seated, if we can stand up. And Heavenly Father, as your servant, I want to speak the blessing of God, the Father, the blessing of God, the Son, blessing of God, the Holy Spirit. Your word teaches us that God is able to keep us from falling 
until the day of Jesus Christ. And I pray that you will keep us strong and stable and serving God in everything that we do. I speak that blessing upon each one of us in Jesus' name. And everyone says, Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise. I pray that you have learned something. I pray that you have learned something and that you are going to exercise what it is that God has taught you. Tuesday, we have our prayer service right here. I invite you to come. Let us join together in prayer. This Saturday, all men, you are invited at 7 a.m. for our monthly uh, men's uh, fellowship. Come in. Let us get to share together. By the way, if you've never come for it, please come for it. I want to invite you boldly to come. Uh, even as we share together and as we learn together. Turn to your neighbor and share with them the words of the grace and tell them, and now may the grace. I can even more confidently. Your volume will be low, sana. Surely. Go and excel in every grace.